last week we've seen some pretty substantial rain in the north of the country, but in New South Wales there's even been a little bit of drizzle and showers around from the south coast in particular. As much as 10 millimetres was recorded by 9am on Monday morning in the New South Wales south coast. But up in the far north, that's where the storms have been pretty heavy. This is a shot out in Nullumboy where we had some big thunderstorms around as well. Here's the totals over the past week. Up around the western parts of the top end, it's really ramped up in the past 24 hours. But along the, new, along the Queensland coast, rather, we've had really heavy falls about a week ago now. And that was with ex-tropical cyclone Penny making landfall and much of that rain in New South Wales was with thunderstorms as well back in the middle of last week. In terms of what's to come this week, the showers and storms continuing across the tropics through the next few days, in fact right across the week, but in the southeast we'll start to see a little bit of rain developing as we move into the back end of the week and that's with that cool change starting to sweep across the southeast around Friday into Saturday. After that we'll see a few showers and thunderstorms spreading along the New South Wales ranges and that will be continuing through the weekend and into the start of next week as well as the showers continue through the far north of the country. Let's have a look at those totals. So, as you can see, we're not looking at any major totals on any individual days, except with isolated thunderstorms. It's not going to be widespread heavy monsoon rain, but we are definitely seeing an uptick in the shower and thunderstorm activity compared to last week. It's going to start to focus a little bit more through the Kimberley by the time we get to Thursday, but down through the southeast, you can see that rain developing, and some places will be seeing five to 10 millimeters. That's that slightly darker shading of green on your screen. And that will continue to spread a little bit more into New South Wales over the weekend with those showers and thunderstorms. But let's wrap it up for the week. Those totals, they do end up getting to a pretty substantial level in the far north of the country. Quite a few places looking at 50, maybe 100 millimeters in far north Queensland, and across the NT top end and also through the Kimberley whilst down through the southeast the heaviest rain looks to be about 20 maybe 30 millimeters all up I'm having a look at some of your pictures and we're going to start in Perth. If you are in Perth this weekend we are in for an absolute scorcher. Temperatures so far are set to reach very much into the high 30s, plenty of sunshine there. Let's have a look at Ararat in Victoria, 300 metre visibility. This photo posted on Twitter by Paul Yo, and that's in Ararat, Victoria. In Rosebury in Tasmania, or well, certainly on the weekend, we had those northerly winds ahead of a change. And as a result, we had very high temperatures and total fire bands in force for the southern areas of Tassie. I was actually there on the weekend, absolutely beautiful. Sun rising in, well, Lilydale in Victoria. Gorgeous photo there on Facebook and another photo posted on Instagram of Dubbo in New South Wales. We are in heat wave conditions through central parts of the nation. So extremely hot temperatures in the high 30s, low 40s. We love seeing your photos. So if you'd like to share them with us, you can send them via our Facebook page, Twitter and Instagram. <laughs> The mercury has been up in Melbourne with heatwave conditions extending down into the south of the country. We have seen new protocols put in place at the Australian Open because of the heat. Our reporter Gabriella Power has more. Large parts of the country are experiencing heatwave conditions, including Melbourne. Temperatures soared into the 30s, but on the court, it was much hotter. The Australian Open has updated its heat policy and could force players to take 10-minute breaks under extreme conditions. We have a lot of hot air coming down from central Australia, and that's moving into the south and far west parts of New South Wales during this week. And as this week progresses, that hot air is going to continue to progress further north. So much of New South Wales will be in uh, severe heat wave conditions. But the heat didn't put off tennis fans with a record breaking number of people expected through the gates. Many of the 80,000 ticket holders also have access to free public transport. More than 3,000 extra tram services will be put on between the city and Melbourne Park for the next two weeks, with services running every few minutes during busy periods. Gabriella Power, Sky News, Melbourne. Absolutely devastating and deadly snowstorms and avalanches have occurred across the parts of Europe over the last week or so, but in terms of the weather, it does look like things have certainly settled down, which is some better news, and we'll have a look at temperatures 
in a moment. Let's head to New Zealand first of all, where we are going to see some showers and rain for the North Island by the return to blue sky throughout Tuesday for much of the South Island. And the air quality is going to improve in Beijing thanks to a bit of a gusty cold front there. And also we'll see some rain spreading to southern China as we head into Tuesday. Let's head to Europe. So Vienna heading for a top of three. Some that's over there, but really drying out across much of Europe. Athens could also see some cold weather. And over in the west, fine conditions after a foggy start in Paris, a top of nine degrees. Joburg in for some storms by Tuesday afternoon. And it's going to be cloudy but dry for Cape Town and some heavy rain set to kick in around the Uruguay region and we've got some rain and storms continuing in the northern areas there. But Buenos Aires could also see some storms with a top of 28 degrees. And last but not least in North America, we've got showers for parts of California, including LA with a top of 15 and sunshine returning to the northeast New York after a freezing start, a top of three degrees. And of course, the most comprehensive weather in the nation is right here on Sky News Weather Channel 603.